Hello everyone and welcome to Jeff G tonight. No news tonight. I just want to talk about something uh, personal that I'm forced to talk about at this point. It's uh, I've been wanting to keep it relatively calmer and less uh, less public, but uh, I've been forced by the by the various events because people have discovered about it, and so I might as well talk about it instead of letting rumors develop and all of the uh, all of the messy information that can step uh, that can stem from it um so yeah it's the disappearance of mama jf mama jf has been disappearing in the sense of not leaving uh not leaving any contact not leaving information about where she was uh and i titled my episode the cost of liberty because I didn't want any of this. I'm just a family guy, and I've always been wanting to provide and secure for people around me. Uh, but there is one thing I cannot do in our society. I cannot stop you from doing crazy stuff. I cannot stop you from exposing yourself to risks when... You say the words, I want to do it. When you claim your own liberty, you are on your own, and I cannot do anything to protect you. And so <clears throat> that, uh, I don't know if Mama JF is in danger. I don't know where she is. Uh, but at this point, I'm forced to talk about it because people are spreading rumors on the internet. Because So, so I'll just give you my, <clears throat> my perspective on all of this and... And, you know, people are, are accusing me of murder on, on the internet. It's like, you guys don't know. You guys don't know the police. I've been speaking with the feds on an everyday basis uh, for a couple of days now, for maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe a couple of days. For a couple of days, I've been speaking uh, to the police <coughs> on a regular basis. So it all stems from Mama Jeff, you guys know, and I've stated it publicly in June, she left. She didn't want, uh, she, I mean, it's not even clear why she left and she's done it in the past. You guys have seen it. who have been following the show for years. Uh, she, she wanted to go away. So that's, that's all uh, we often know with Mama JF. She wants to go away. She had done it once and had come back, uh, to us um weeks after uh, and you'll remember she she came on the show on the day she came back and she said something along the lines of uh well i thought you want you didn't want to be with me anymore uh and so <clears throat> and, and i said to her no no you left of your own will uh but but she says yes and then she says yes but i thought i thought you wanted me to leave that is sometimes the, the state of delusion in female minds, and I can't do anything about this. I have zero control over this. If we were in the society, the Christian society of 1920, maybe I could file some report and say, hey, my wife is a little crazy, she's a little out there. Can I control, can, can I own her, basically? <laughs> and I'm sure that, that there were, uh, I mean, basically you didn't have to file that paper in 1920s. Because in the, in the 1920s, this was called marriage. <laughs> but we are not in the 1920s. And we are in 2023 where uh, we have an experiment going on in society. What happens when you let these females do whatever the fuck they want well <clears throat> what happens is that they sometimes make bad decisions so um in june she left and and two days after leaving so she left and she had a whole plan she had she had bought uh, camping material. She was on her way to some sort of survivalist trip. From what I understood, it looked like she was preparing for life in the wild. Uh, she promised me when she left that she would always be reachable and that I would be able to reach her to deal with all of the official papers. You know that she owns a lot of stuff and 
sometimes I need our signature. And I was like, and, and although, you know, we, we do have legal remedies for this, I was like, uh, if you totally disappear, you might put me in trouble on some bills, on some, you know, getting utilities and everything. So, so she promised to me that she wouldn't fully disappear. Um, and um, she went away. And two days later, she, she talked to me on the phone and sent a message but by the way, everything I, I tell you is things I have told to the police. So it's uh, it's not uh, there's no secret coming out that you guys are hearing. To, it might be secret from a public perspective, but it's all things that the feds have been knowing for a couple of days. So the last uh, message that she sends me uh, in June, two days after leaving. And it had been apparent, I think I, I may have been in contact for a couple of times during these two days, so I was sure that she was progressing through whatever trip she wanted to do. I knew that she was still alive. Uh, but two days uh, after leaving, she says, I have changed my plans. I will not hold my promise uh, toward you. I will not be reachable. And I, And it's like... Okay, uh, I, uh, she says, I have a new plan. And I'm like, does your new plan involve any sort of attack against me or the family? Because you guys know how, mo uh, how important that is to me. She says, you don't have to be worried. My new plan does not involve you. I'm just going to change cell phone. Now, I knew that she had left without any sort of electronic tracking. You know how the police can track you with your credit card, with your debit card. She had left with nothing but her phone. So when she said that to me through text, I concluded, okay, she's going off grid. You know, she's going full survivalism. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of in her in, in her fashion. I mean, that's the way Mama JF is. So changing her phone to me, it meant I'm I'm dropping potentially my own identity behind. I'm potentially disappearing in nature. I'm potentially, I mean, she could be anywhere from there. Uh so and that's what I was explaining to the police, you know, Mama JF. Uh, you, you remember the story she told on her video on YouTube where she talked about crossing the border in, in Spain and in the enclaves of Spain in North Africa? Mama Jeff is a fucking extreme, like, 007 level of, like, fugitive mentality. Uh, and I, I was kind of telling that to the police uh, jokingly, half-jokingly, but it's like she she's a professional fugitive who doesn't commit crimes. <laughs> so it's like, she's going to be hiding from you as, as hard as she can while also not having anything to reproach to herself. But that's just how she is. So, I mean, she, she and so from there, I'm like, I'm going to drop myself behind. I'm going to disappear. Uh, you're not going to be able to reach me. So that is uh, what I've been knowing since June. And... Of course, you're faced with the big, should I call the police? This is a willing woman, a willing adult woman doing her willing stuff. So I've not called the police because in my view, there was no evidence of criminality. There was no evidence of distress. It looked like, to me, someone who has decided to go survivalism. Will I report someone for being survivalist? I mean, th this reminds me of the, of the Facebook post. You know, it, as one of your loved ones gone to survivalism, as one of your loved one bought too much camping material, <laughs> that is literally one of the Facebook book posts. But I don't want to be in the society where buying camping material gets you reported to the feds. And I am bound, I am bound to Mama JF Santeras because I've loved her and I still love her and I still consider, I, I consider myself allied to her forever. Uh, forever, no matter what she does, even if she goes out there going, getting other boyfriends, 
I consider myself tied to her forever. So at this point, I'm in front of this information. And I've decided that this was not warranting a call to the police in June. And I've spoke to her, I've spoken to her family. And they thought similarly, you know, this is Mama JF. Uh, <clears throat> she is an out there woman, and uh, it's not the first time she does this. Uh, in the absence of any evidence of harm or that she's she's doing something evil to someone else, that there's no reason to call the police. And in fact, we even had someone in the family uh, talked loosely to a federal investigator who was friends with us and just asking, you know, what is this? Is this a disappearance or is this just a woman? Uh, <laughs> Just a woman doing whatever she wants. And and, and the, the investigator had actually, I mean, from what I heard, this is not an interaction that I had myself, but someone who was worried in the family spoke to an investigator and said, uh, look, this, those are the facts. It's a woman. She leaves like this. She wanted to leave. She gets herself equipped with camping material and all. Is this a disappearance? Is this something we should signal? And uh, the investigator had said, well, no, this looks like a, a, a consensual trip. So I was reassured that not only was my judgment uh, converging toward uh, the fact that Mama JF does not need help and that she, she's a free woman, she can decide to do this. Uh, and also the, these, uh, there was these social signals reinforcing that I wasn't the only one thinking this. Other people were thinking this also. So that was the state in June and July. But then, you know, the months pass and now we're in October. When is it that worries are justified? And so there was a building up of stress in the people who love her. And my position has always been to all of these people any friend of Mama JF and to any person involved, my position has been, I saw her go. I saw her wanting to, to go. And so I, I don't need to call the police. But if you feel that it warrants a call to the police, I respect you and you go ahead and call them. And I will not say who ended up calling, but someone, someone ended up noticing that that somehow Mama JF was missing and, and, and maybe knew about me. I, I don't know. I don't know exactly how it all happened, but someone ended up noticing, hey, there's this girl and her loved ones are, don't know where she is. And so they made a call to the police and this launched a whole investigation uh, that, has been, that I've been involved in for, I don't know, maybe four days, five days, I don't know. Uh, but the feds are coming regularly at my house. They are waking me in the morning. <laughs> I sleep late uh, and all of my loved ones sleep late or just that way. We are, we are computer programmers living in the night. You know, that is just what we do. And I'm a man of the internet. My show is at 7 PM Eastern time and it's not even the end of my day. Uh, so, yeah, so they, they wake me up every morning. Uh, there are days where they come once, where there are days where they come twice. Um, there's always a truck of the feds um, in front of my house. Uh, and, you know, I, <clears throat> there, there's lots of people making jokes right now on the social media, like, Jeff, where did you hide the body and all? I knew that this was coming to this no matter what, because... We live in a society that just can't accept the cost of liberty. The cost of liberty is you're going to have a bunch of females make terrible decisions. But no, I have not killed Mama JF. And I would be very surprised that I'm even considered a suspect uh, in any way. Uh, because I have left records. I have left electronic traces of uh, of my dropping her alive uh, in front of cameras of a of a gas station and 
there has been plenty of electronic records of the fact that she was alive many days after leaving me, uh, after after asking me to drop her at a certain location. Uh, so, um, and yes, you know, there, there are so many cameras these days and credit cards purchases that I can prove. I would be very surprised that I'm anyhow considered a suspect, but the feds are still very uh, thirsty for information. So they, they keep coming back. And honestly, I'm very impressed by the quality of their work, but it's like, they understand also that I'm I'm a guy on the internet, so uh, I'm not. <laughs> I have a high security home. I'm not going to let them in, you know. But it's like okay, they they want to they want every possible detail they can have about Mama JF because they they are on this program of finding Mama JF, and and it's fascinating to see a bunch of professionals like this who really are interested in her safety. Let me tell you. I'm I'm a hostile to the government in general, but I've always known that within the police force, the vast majority of policemen are excellent, uh, just excellent workers and professionals. And I see it. I see it in my interactions with them. They they understand everything. So uh, yeah. So that means yeah, they they are coming to me and they want. They want to know exactly what she said before leaving. They want traces of where were you when you dropped her? Who could know her? Who are her friends? And it's like uh, I pulled Mama JF out of uh, out of a lifestyle, and I I never really got acquainted with this lifestyle. You know, I'm not the kind of I I don't have respect for human beings, especially not homeless druggies. You know, so it's. I'm not the kind of guy who will uh, who will approach a female and become friends with her male friends. Uh, so what I did with Mama JF is I extracted her from her misery and from her lifestyle, and I brought her to a greater lifestyle, cleaner, uh, you know, less uh, less craziness. Uh, so. That is uh, that is what I've done, and so when they ask me where could she be, is she friends with this guy? Is she friends with these guys? It's like I have just a general idea that Mama Jeff is a super social creature of Montreal, and that's what I've been telling them. Um, and uh, yeah, so that that that's been uh, so. The feds being extremely, you know, on their path of we need to save everyone. Uh, we need to save everyone. Uh, and, and I'm like, it's amazing to see the conversations between them and me because I'm actually less motivated at finding Mama Jeff than they are. I've never requested any of this. I want to be clear, if Mama Jeff is out there listening to this, I want to be clear to, with you, Mama Jeff. I've not been requesting an investigation against you. I've not been trying to send the feds after you. I've not been uh, wanting to do this episode even. I'm forced to do this episode because there are forum posts right now that your face is on whatever the feds have published. And, and, so, and, and then people are, are, are looking at my tweet today and forming people about this. And, and they're like... Well, look, he, he calls her Mama JF. He doesn't even call her by her real name. So he's not really interested at them finding her. It's like the, there's a lot, a lot of interest to wade in here. First, by naming Mama JF a way that I've never named her publicly, I would only be misleading people. The fact is everyone who interacts with me through this platform knows Mama JF as Mama JF. So the... That's her name for you guys. I'm not going to reveal her real name because honestly, I, I don't even know if she wants to be found. And, and that is something you have to wait when, when you're in this situation. I am a bearer of the interest of Mama JF. Maybe she doesn't want to be found. Maybe she she's on a huge trip, uh, whatever, thinking going to parties, maybe she's going to Woodstock in the US, I have no clue. 
but maybe she doesn't want to be found. And that's part of her liberty that I have to defend. I'm not going to, uh, not going to act like these uh, worried families who want to help someone more than they want to be helped. Because one thing I have learned at enormous cost in my life is don't help someone who doesn't want to be helped. And so I, I'm, I'm like to these feds, I'm like, please, please understand, you're going to pursue a fugitive who has committed zero crime. She's going to be... She's going to be playing with you, sending you on false traces. She's going to have her hoodie hiding herself from facial recognition cameras everywhere she enters. She has dropped all of her electronics behind. She's basically 007, but she has no mission. And she's not fleeing you guys for a crime that she did because she's a good person. She's not going to commit a crime. That's the situation. You guys want to have fun finding her to be sure that she's safe? You go ahead. But uh, I, know, I know Will when I see it. And her will was to go out there and, and for whatever period. I, I didn't know when she left whether it would be a two-week period like last time or whether it would be a two-year period. She could be on a container traveling toward Morocco right now, and she she could have dealt uh, she could have dealt with the locals at the port. She could have talked to a a boat driver and give him some money and get on the boat. Who the fuck knows? I mean, and so that is uh, that is the situation and. To, to people who are saying, well, he doesn't make all efforts to find her, but he doesn't name her in her tweet, or he doesn't show a photo of her. I'm not going to show a photo of her or name her when this is not my quest. This is not my quest. I had a, I had a visual confirmation from Mama JF live in front of me that she wanted to go away. So as far as I'm concerned, she's still in a trip. She's still out there just tripping. And, uh, uh, and I'm not going to publish her image because I don't know whether she consents to it. I'm not going to name her name because I don't know if she consents to it. If she wants to call me and say, Jeff, I want to be found, or Jeff, I don't want to be found, she could do it and she can do it. So yeah, uh, what I said in my tweet is, if you guys want to help the police... And you've seen Mama JF somewhere. You, you've seen her at a gas station. You've seen someone who looks like her. You just call the police or, or check my tweet and you will find a Proton Mail uh, email address. If you don't want to be in contact with the police, just send me an email and I can relay any information that I think is relevant or factual. I'm not going to relay trolling so you guys can already forget the idea of trolling me, uh, I'm going to relay what seems to be uh, what seems to be important, but it's probably Mama JF is out there having fun, uh, probably exposing herself to huge risks. You know the the risks of street life and anonymous life. When no one is there to care for you, you are at risk. Because no one knows. No, no one knows if someone has raped you and just put your body in, in a ditch. And no one is there to check. That, that, that's the consequence of anonymity. That's the consequence of having no one. That is the cost of liberty. But we've chosen to... And Mama JF has fully chosen to, to run with that cost. So it's like she has her husband right here, ready to care for her, ready to give her security and comfort and not demanding anything from her. She chose to expose herself to whatever risk it is, and she totally has the right to do so. Uh, Shadow Ban says, if someone could get away with murder, it's JF. But if someone could get away with faking their death, it's Mama JF. <laughs> that is absolutely correct. I mean, you, you, you have found an interesting duality right here. 
absolutely, totally the style of Mama JF to basically fake her death or to just disappear in a way that she can switch identity. I mean, she's... Uh, and it's amazing because Mama JF doesn't watch movies like CSI and 007 or... Uh, she doesn't watch James Bond and gets excited at it, but her life is a James Bond movie of its own. <laughs> that is what is so amazing. Holy shit. What a, what a crazy woman. Who, but you know, out of the crazy woman who have been in my life, uh, she has always been um, morally straight, you know? Uh, yes, all of this disappearance uh, is causing some kind of shake-up and chaotic thing in my life. I mean, I'm getting woken up by the feds every morning. They're, they're knocking at my window, and I'm like, what? <laughs> but I, I'd much rather this than, uh, than evil stuff, than attacks on loved ones. I would much rather the chaotic nature of Mama Jeff, but with a kind of moral pillar to it than uh, anything uh, anything else, anything more evil. Forex says, often when worried families get the state involved to save or help someone, they make it significantly worse for the person. There is very little help the state can give to a person against their own will. That is very wise. And that is what I was telling the policeman, you know, wherever Mama JF is, it was our choice to be there, and it was our choice to run these risks. And she would hate it to hear that all of these people are looking for her. So now there's a whole national campaign <clears throat> to find Mama JF. And I will ask Mama JF and you guys just to calm all these people. Can you please collaborate? Like, go ahead and just, just. If you've seen Mama JF alive and you can reassure everyone and you can calm these people and you can make so the feds don't knock on my door on an, on an everyday basis, that would be very appreciated. Uh, as far as I know from this investigation, as far as my interaction with the police, I understand it to be, they are not interested in any form of persecution of me, of Mama JF. They are just interested at establishing that Mama JF is alive. So Mama JF, uh, if you hear this, uh, you have a chance there to calm all these people down. Uh, only with a word from you, I'm sure they would be reassured. Uh, Silver Spider says, JF is such a loyal guy. I really hope he finds a loyal wife. We should pull all of our super chats together and... Order him one from Japan. Well, talking about wives from Japan, I mean... Yes! Martin Shkreli! Oh my god! He scored! He scored the uh, ultimate jaw-having Asian. I have never seen this, ladies and gentlemen. The sexy body of the neotenic Asian combined with the perfect jaw of the European genetics, how, how the hell, where the hell does Martin Shkreli find such perfection? Tiffany Fong is new girlfriend of Martin Shkreli. Yes. Oh my God. I'm so happy for you, Martin. I'm so happy. Uh, Daryl says that's almost too much ja. I mean, th this is the point at which uh, it's almost there. Uh, Balloon Nut says, uh, sends 10 bucks. Thank you so much. He says, are you serious? Did Mama JF really leave the family for no other reason than to be a drifter? I mean, it looks like it. It looks like it. Um, <laughs> I mean, you you guys know, we have seen her here on the show, uh, leaving uh, back like a year or two ago. And we have seen her again disappearing. And, you know, just, just before she left in June, I remember a bizarre show. A bizarre show where I accused her of terrorism. 
because she tried to enter the studio with something that I do not allow at all on this show, like at all. And she knows it very well that there will never be such things on this show. And she attempted to surprise me by surprise opening the door of the studio and came running to my camera. And I had the, I had the chance to turn off the camera just before she arrived to me because it's like, it's like two meters. That she did a two meter run to try to violate one of the ultimate rule of the show, a rule so intense that you guys cannot even ever hear it, that you guys cannot e that, that I can, cannot even tell you what the rule is. Uh, and it's like, and then I said, Mama JF, uh, you, you're banned from the show for a couple of weeks because that was actual terrorism. Uh, you have attempted to terrorize me and... Uh, yeah, so so that was uh, that was maybe weeks before she left. Um, I, I don't know that it's directly related, but I think that she was starting to kind of be in a mood of party, and in her party mood, she had forgotten that there are serious rules in Papa JF's uh, house. Uh, so yes. That is basically all I have to say, and this story is so waiting on my mind that uh, I don't think I can. Uh, I don't think I can continue the show tonight with news or stuff of uh, of a frivolous nature. That this is too much on my mind, and that is why I had to take a break. Also, two days ago, it's because, man, uh, just waking up early is something that I had the privilege in my life to attain such a degree of luxury that I can wake up whenever I want, whenever I feel like, all the time. But for four or five days, I'm back to a, you know, waking up at 9 a.m. Uh, because the feds are... And they, they knock for a long time, you know, <laughs> before they wake me up. Uh, so it's been... Uh, it's been tiring me because when you, when you change my sleep schedule where I'm super used to this very long sleep where I'm fully rested, now suddenly you, you mess up my normal sleep and suddenly I'm more tired. Uh, so any information would be appreciated to calm all of these people. And uh, it will have been a short show for tonight, but... Um, that's all I have to say. That's all I have to say. Uh, I can read actually what I wrote today on Twitter. The police in Canada is looking for Mama JF because in true Mama JF fashion, she has left our home in June and has disappeared from the map. I am sure that Mama JF is fine. I know she has been safe for at least two days after I dropped her where she wanted in June. Mama JF left our home entirely voluntarily to go live a life of adventure wherever it would bring her. Uh, but since she has electronically disappeared, not connecting to her cell phone or updating me or her family, I ask anyone who would have encountered her to just notify the police so that they can know she is safe. And I ask her if she wants to leave a note to the police, me, or her family to ensure everyone of her safety. If you want to send an encrypted tip anonymously, I can receive them at jfgaryep at proton.me. And uh, someone was asking, did everyone's girl lose her shit this summer? Mine went full postpartum bunkers in August. And I said, that's the cost of female liberty. 50,000 policemen, full-time salary, nationwide searches. We could feed the homeless a billion times. Uh, <laughs> just take our society and just allow some degree of control by husbands onto their wives. Just basic control of some little financial aspects, 
So I'm like, no, you won't travel to Peru. And so I'm going to decide for you that you won't travel to Peru. Just allow some form of control of husbands over their wives. And you're not going to get events like the Mama JF craziness here. But if you want that female liberty, Papa JF can provide. And because we are in a liberal society, yeah, I'm going to stand by the ideals of our society. And the ideals of our society first is, I cannot keep a woman against her will. I cannot, I cannot go against her request. I cannot intimidate her to stay with me. I cannot manipulate her emotionally to be one way or another. And so what are the tools I have left as a man? The tools I have left is, all right, I respect your liberty. You, you want to go out there and do, do your crazy lifestyle? Where do you want me to drop you? I, I will drop you in the safest way and place I can. But that is all I can do. And that is the cost of liberty. Thank you so much for listening, everyone, and much love. Uh, I'm personally uh, very confident that this is a, a big scare, and I hope that Mama JF understands that she is causing too much scare. And Mama JF, I don't, I'm not hostile toward you or anything. I haven't demanded this whole investigation against you. I respect uh, wherever you are, and I, I hope that you're happy. Just give a call to someone. Just, just leave a little email here or there. Give a clue that it's really you. And, and just give a sign of life. You will calm all of these people. Uh, that is it for tonight. Uh, meanwhile, uh, some people have different girlfriends. This is the girlfriend of the guy who got shot uh, in the video that I've shown yesterday in New York. Oh my God. She has a K Marks. So, so that's the girl who was standing in front of her dying boyfriend and who I was like, mm, she doesn't seem so concerned. Like, she seems concerned at a level not of, oh my God, my boyfriend's going to die. She, she seems more like, oh my God, that is some trouble I didn't want to have to go through tonight. <laughs> and it turns out she's a extreme Marxist with a nose ring. Holy shit. The red flags. Yusamin says, is that why JF kept using the word crack whore around that time? Well, crack whore is my general term for, you know, uh, for women who live at the bottom of society and who are into drugs. So yes, crack whores is... Uh, I've been alarmed at the reality of crack whores many times in my life. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Much love and uh, let us remain hopeful. Thank you.